What would you say is the biggest misconception about you? That I literally came out of nowhere and I'm an industry plant. Despite claiming it as the biggest misconception about her, for many of us, Tyla really did appear out of nowhere. But we friends, though. You're right. Yeah, we're friends. Prior to friend zoning Kaisenet, not only did Tyla ink a record deal with one of the biggest labels, Epic Records, while only having one song released, but now with her global smash hit Water plus remixes from label mate Travis Scott and Marshmallow, the 22 year old artist is well on the way to her goal of Africa's first pop star. However, as with any artist that blows up seemingly overnight, Tyla's come up has raised red flags among fans. Many quick to label her Epic Records' newest industry plan. Oh my gosh, guys, this is crazy. Like, I never thought I'd say I won a Grammy at 22 years old. Yes. A girl from South Africa, this doesn't happen. But while it is true that Tyla does have a very experienced management team behind her, including some veteran industry giants in her corner, in this video we revealed the truth behind Tyla's suspicious rise to fame. Often it takes entire careers to accomplish what Tyla has done by just the age of 22. Today, when you stumble across a new artist you've never heard before and they have over 30 million monthly listeners but only 10 songs released, and two of those 10 are remixes by one of the world's biggest rappers and biggest DJs, not to mention she just became the youngest African artist to ever win a Grammy and has been seen with countless A-list stars, it's easy for fans to see this and claim that Tyla is simply a manufactured product of a major label planting her in the industry. However, while well, we'll see in a second if that's true or not, born and raised in Johannesburg, South Africa, Tyla Seethel has been working towards her music dreams since she was a little kid. Hey, I'm Tyler Cecil. I'm 11 years old and I'm going to be singing for Badass Moon. Well, let me tell you a story about a girl and a boy. But there were two major problems in her way. First was the fact that no one from South Africa had ever achieved success as a pop artist on the global stage. And because of this, the second big problem was that Tyla's parents did not initially support her music ambition. But despite all of the odds stacked against her, and despite her parents' strict no social media policy, after being introduced to R&B icons such as Stevie Wonder and Whitney Houston, as well as Afrobeat stars like Wizkid and Burner Boy who were always playing out loud around the house, teenage Tyla began sneaking behind her parents' back and uploading videos of herself singing to YouTube and Instagram. I really looked up to Rihanna because she came from outside of America and just dominated the industry, says Ty Love, one of her biggest influences. Along with posting cover videos to popular Justin Bieber, Boys to Men, and Billie Eilish tracks, Tyla would also DM her music to these famous stars. I was DMing tons of people across the industry my covers and original music. I just thought they would reply and I'd be flown out and blow up like Justin Bieber. Most went unread, but I was persistent. I would ask my followers to give me a topic or genre to write about, and soon one of those caught the attention of my now manager. And then I was discovered. However, right here is where you'll start to hear conflicting stories and is really where the industry plant rumors begin. But if you ask Tyla, the story goes like this. In addition to posting her music on Instagram and YouTube, Tyla had also been gaining a small following on the app formerly known as Musical.ly, now called TikTok and what has since played a major role in Tyla's rise to fame. TikTok, I just used to make videos for fun because that's what I do. And then like, as my following started growing, I realized, hold on. I can use this. But although every mainstream star she would send her music to, like Drake and DJ Khaled, never responded, one of her videos did catch the attention, though, of this guy, Garth Von Glenn, in 2019. Based between Cape Town and New York, Garth Von Glenn is a director and photographer as well as founder of Flourish and Multiply, aka Fax, a record label which, as we can see here, is still working with Tyla today and just co-released her debut album. According to Tyla, Von Glenn had sent her an email out of nowhere, basically offering his services to work with her. She initially thought it was a scam, then after finally talking Talking things through with her parents, they set up a meeting and agreed on Von Glenn becoming her first manager. However, according to South African YouTuber and podcast host Mac G, there might be a little more to it. So Tyler, this is where I'm going. Oh, yeah, water. Water. Yeah. She's like the biggest. That should have been Shoma Josie. So what happened is Shoma Josie was dating her videographer, some white guy, right? Okay. And then they broke up. Okay. So when they broke up, this videographer started dating Tyler, right? Yo. And then he started like shooting music videos for her. So like, you know when Shoma Josie was on like John Cena and doing all those things? There was a team behind that. And it was the videographer's influence. Yes. Whoa. So now that team is on Tyler now. Yo. They're focusing on Tyler. Wow. They're pushing her like crazy. While nothing's been confirmed, there does seem to be some truth behind Mac G's claim. 
Not only was Tyla's first music video directed by Von Glenn, who was previously shooting videos for another South African artist, Shoma Josie, which Shoma Josie was at one point signed under Fax Records 2 and released her viral John Cena song with Von Glenn, and from the looks of wishing her happy Valentine's Day on Instagram, I'd say the pair did indeed used to be dating. And while again this is still speculation, you can also find multiple comments of heart emojis between Tyla and Garth on their pages. But regardless of the exact terms of how their relationship began, Von Glenn's help as her manager no doubt got Tyla's foot in the door. Described as a creative artist hub, Von Glenn's studio loft was the perfect place for Tyla to go record music and do photo and video shoots. I ended up going to the studio every weekend in my last year of high school, she says. By the end of the year, I told my parents that I wanted to do this full time. But that was a whole different story I had to deal with. Tyla was yet again faced with the massive obstacle of her own parents. As I feel like most parents would in their situation, following Tyla's high school graduation in 2019 as the head of culture for her class, they wanted their daughter to stay in school and get a good college education, saying she could do music as a side hobby, but that she needed to be realistic. But despite actually enrolling in university to study minor engineering, after months of crying, Tyla's parents agreed to let her take a one-year break. But the deal was she had to return back to school if her music career didn't take off. Every day I would just cry on my mother this bed and be like please like please just give me one year and because I was a year younger luckily they were like okay you're a year younger you can have one year I'm still on my gap year now she jokes nevertheless 2019 and 2020 were the years that Tyler states is the hardest period of her life now pursuing music full-time and with the help of Garth Von Glenn Tyler began working with South African producer cool drink who had been living with Von Glenn and previously worked as Shoma Josie's engineer featuring a unique blend of pop R&B and Afrobeats with shakers and log drums the two were crafting Tyler's signature sound now dubbed Papiano. I've always wanted to make music that's a fusion between African music and Western like pop and R&B. So then, just three months after graduating high school, Tyla would drop her debut single Getting Late in October of 2019, released through Fax Records and with production by Cool Drink. Although Tyla of course promoted it all over social media, Getting Late was not initially the 7 million stream hit that it is today. That's in large part because the music video that blew up didn't release until almost two years after the song. I have never cried as much as I did last year, says Tyla on her post for the music video. After two hard years leading up to that point, my team and I were on the verge of launching my career and shooting my first ever music video. Around this time last year, we managed to shoot a few really amazing scenes, but just before we could finish, Corona hit. We didn't have a lot to work with, and everything you see we did by ourselves. Even if it only gets 270 views on YouTube and my career fails, I'll just watch this video and I'm pretty sure I'll be happy. I didn't have a whole hey, producer, videographer, like no. It was like me, my best friend, my manager. Combined with all of the pressure to prove herself to her parents, at this point in 2021, Tyla feared that she was out of time. However, after posting a snippet of the Getting Late music video on Twitter, her life was about to change forever. With currently over 9 million views on YouTube, it's safe to say that Getting Late exceeded Tyla's 270 view expectation. Everyone, especially in South Africa, was retweeting and reposting like, wow, this is from here. It was a shock because I don't think anyone here had put that much effort into their own music video before. It was literally like God gave it to me and was wow. like, yeah. Parents are like, all right, we're good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now they're like, okay, okay, okay. Directed by her manager and possibly boyfriend, Garth Von Glenn, aka Top Shotta, the success of Getting Late was not only enough to finally get Tyla's parents off her back, but after record labels got a glimpse of her talent, she sparked an all-out bidding war between basically every major label to sign her. Enter Sylvia Roan, the Epic Records CEO and legendary music executive who's worked with icons like ACDC, Erica Badu, and Travis Scott to name a few. In addition to an entire billboard with Tyla's face on it in her hometown, signed Love, Sylvia Roan from Epic Records, what really sold Tyla on choosing Epic, though, was their promise of creative freedom, which staying true was very important to her as an artist. Guys, your South African girl has a major global record deal, Tyla tweeted. I am signed to Epic Records USA, which is owned by Sony Music. So I was literally just making music, and when I dropped the video for Getting Late, all the labels literally reached out. There was a whole bidding war. Like, it was crazy. And yeah, Epic was the one I went with. Tyla would officially ink her first ever deal with Epic Records in May of 2021 through a joint venture with Garth Von Glenn and his label Fax Records. It was a very competitive signing, recalls Epic CEO Sylvia Roan, especially since we're 10,000 plus miles away. We wanted something sincere, personal, and authentic, and that's what sealed the deal. However, while Tyla and her personality are undeniably authentic, today many fans will tell you that her rise to fame is not. And after seeing what happened next, can you really blame them? 
Just days after signing her contract with Epic, Tyla was on an airplane and leaving South Africa for the first time ever. Her flight was not to the United States, but instead to Dubai where her new record label was waiting. At the time, we couldn't get the resources and people to South Africa to make it happen, says Epic Records president Ezekiel Lewis, so I figured Dubai would be a good place that could host us all. It was a very expensive proposition and undertaking, but she was worth it. Upon landing in Dubai, Epic had assembled the team of various American, European, and African songwriters and producers, including three-time Grammy winner and former Epic CEO Tricky Stewart to all form a writing camp in Dubai just for Tyla. Then, for the next two and a half years, Epic continued to rotate Tyla between a group of hitmakers in Nigeria, Jamaica, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and the United States, with the goal to write and record her debut album. But along with releasing a few dance singles, including Been Thinking, To Last, and an original song for the Netflix series Blood and Water, Epic would also plug Tyla as an opening act on Chris Brown's Under the Influence tour this offers here i was like what the heck mm -hmm. like oh, like i didn't know what was happening really but it was like a two day rehearsal then i had to go on the o in the o2 wow. and do my thing oh. like i was literally thrown into the deep end now it is also important to note that in addition to Epic Records and Garth Von Glenn's Fax Records, Tyla has also been co-managed by this guy Colin Gale since late 2020. As a seasoned artist manager from Jamaica and founder of the Africa Creative Agency, when you work with Colin though you really get yourself a package deal, seeing as his wife Yvette is also a powerhouse in the music industry who has worked with hip-hop legends such as 50 Cent, Eminem, Nas, and Mary J. Blige to name a few. Colin says his wife's expertise in PR and marketing complements his focus on strategy and studio work. And to Together, the couple's deep connection to Africa inspired them to start the Africa Creative Agency dedicated to amplifying the voices of African creatives, including Tyla, who they first discovered right before she blew up. So with help from Garth Von Glenn, the Africa Creative Agency, and now one of the biggest record labels, Epic Records, there was no doubt that Tyla was in good hands. As they continued working with her, it was in those studio sessions around the world that she was truly finding herself as an artist, gaining confidence by the day. Then, once she established her go-to, quote, Fantastic Four of favorite collaborators, Tyla and her team were set to make South African history. Make me sway it, make me harder, make me lose my breath, make me water. Only her eighth song ever released, in June of 2023, Tyla dropped her new pop piano single titled Water, the soon-to-be viral phenomenon which catapulted her into the international spotlight. Now certified platinum, this summer anthem would not only peak at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100, making Tyla the highest charting African female solo artist in history, but also became the first South African solo song to even chart on Billboard in over 55 years. With assistance from a team of nine writers including Tricky Stewart and of course her go-to Fantastic Four, and featuring lyrics inspired by Aaliyah's Rock the Boat, Water would also get a remix from one of the biggest rappers in the world, Travis Scott, who to note is signed to Epic Records 2 and also works closely with Sylvia Rohn. People were like, Travis Scott, like why Travis Scott? But <laughs> like, that is exactly why I wanted it, because you don't think of Travis Scott, you know, when you hear Water. Immediately after hearing Water, Tyla knew it was going to be huge. However, she wanted to push it even further. Just days before the song released, her and her team began brainstorming the choreography that was about to take Water to a whole nother level. Inspired by the Bacardi dance style and originally meant for one of her other songs, Tyla insisted that this now viral routine of shaking hips and pouring water down your back was perfect for this song. But when Tyla first performed the dance on stage, she had one of her backup dancers dump the water. And while effective, about a month later she came up with the idea to pour the water on herself. Debuting the move at her next festival in Rwanda, after one fan recorded this clip you're seeing here, Tyla would re posted on her account, it quickly went viral, and the rest is history. I was just like, let me pour water on my back. Like, let's take, <laughs> let's take it to the max. Like, mm -hmm. we need this video to travel. <laughs> This water dance challenge has been making waves all over TikTok and social media since late 2023. Now, at over 150 million views in six months on YouTube alone, the awards have just kept coming Tyla's way thanks to the Smash single. Besides stars like Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, Cardi B, Janet Jackson, and Oprah showing love, only five days after her 22nd birthday, Tyla would become the youngest African artist to ever win a Grammy, taking home the inaugural award for Best African Music Performance at the 2024 Grammys. And the Grammy goes to water. To celebrate this incredible achievement and her birthday, in January, Epic Records invited a few hundred music executives, artists, and fans to Harriet's Rooftop in West Hollywood, where CEO Sylvia Rohn and Epic President Ezekiel Lewis met to present Tyla with three new plaques for her viral hit Water. She's an industry plant. You came from nowhere. Make me hot. Not, not Tyla. Wait, come on. That sounds like just a little bitty girl. Not plant, Tyla. Plant. 
Today, the moment fans see a new artist like Tyla appear to blow up out of nowhere and have all this success, they immediately point to her record label as the sole reason why. However, does that really mean Tyla is an industry plant? The truth is, whether you want to call her an industry plant or not, there's no doubt that Tyla has had a lot of help getting to where she's at. It's no secret that her label, Epic Records, is pushing her very hard right now. Not only getting all these placements and appearances on mainstream stages like The Voice, Jimmy Fallon, and Kaisenat's stream. Would you like to go on a date with me? Are you asking for real? Yeah. But I am also in this YouTube email as a shorts creator and about every single message encourages us to make videos using Tyla's music. First, there was an online meet and greet with Tyla, then a virtual listening session, and again these past two months about every email includes a little section for shorts creators to use her songs. Her team was also able to help her land performances at major festivals this year such as Coachella along with her first ever world tour, but has since been forced to cancel them due to an apparent injury she's been dealing with behind the scenes. To keep her momentum rolling though, her debut self-titled album released in March as a joint venture through Epic and Fax Records. At a concise 14 tracks and features from Thames, Gunna, and Travis Scott, Tyla and her team felt that now was the perfect time to capitalize on her international breakthrough. Again, you can't deny the fact that Tyla's benefited tremendously from her team's help and industry connections. However, that still does not take away from everything she's accomplished. It's like, what the heck? I'm a whole plant. Imagine. People don't know how hard I've worked and how hard my team has worked to get you. But I mean, everyone's gonna get that that comes up from a social media viral moment. As I mentioned in my recent video about another quote industry plant for bats, these past five years we've seen countless random songs blow up on TikTok, but yet very few have been able to capitalize off it like Tyla. And if we're being honest, today a large majority of the artists we all listen to also had help from someone in the industry along the way. It's basically how the game works, a label finds a young artist and then places them in the right positions to be successful. And in the case here of rising star Tyla, not only is she clearly a very talented artist, but she actually has a great personality, not to mention her stunning looks. That's basically my goal. I really want to be the biggest pop star and for people back home, not only South Africa, but Africa in general. I really believe in myself and I know that people are hungry for something new. Yeah. While it is true that Tyla may be a viral sensation, as we just saw she is far from an overnight success. Now at only 22 years old and with a great team behind her, the sky's the limit for South Africa's first global pop star.